Hi, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to SA Accounting Academy. Uh, here's a short clip on one of our previous webinars. I hope that you really do enjoy it. Welcome to the, the session. I hope you are warm. I hope you are safe. Um, I hope everything's going well wherever you are. Um, today's session is uh, one of my fun sessions, although I have to say that it twisted my head into a pretzel last night, um, trying to think about what needed to be done and what needed to be said, because this could go in so many different directions, and just having two hours to chat to you about it really isn't enough. Um, but, you know, I've, and, and for that reason, the notes look really extensive, so I've thrown everything in including the kitchen sink and possibly the pantry cupboard as well um so we won't necessarily get to every single slide um it's more of a conversation that we'll have and and um, i'm going to pick up on the points that i really feel are are critical but everything i discussed should be in the slide somewhere um for you to deal with i would also really appreciate because it's such a broad topic and there's so many different things you could talk about. Um, if there is a burning platform, if there's a burning question um, that you are needing to have covered, um, please pop it in the Q&A. And as those of you that know me know that I pretty much take questions on the fly. I don't necessarily wait at the end of the session for uh, uh, answering, uh, a question answer session. Um, I'd rather deal with issues as they came up. If it's relevant to the conversation as and where we are chatting, then I'll answer it straight away. If I know that I'm going to be talking about the question a little bit later, I'll say thanks for the question. We'll park it and we'll we'll pick it up just now. And if it's something that doesn't quite fit into the flow of the conversation, then um, I'll pick it up at the end or I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you on that particular point. So I hope everybody is good. I hope everybody is well. Um, and I hope that you're, in, you're, you're ready for... Um, a contiki tour in some ways, but uh, there are certain points I want to stop and, and have a chat. There is uh, a, just a little bit of admin. We will have a break pretty much on the hour. Okay. Um, we will have a break pretty much on the hour and uh, just as a comfort break to go grab a cup of coffee and uh, hope that everybody just, you know, stretch your legs. Um, I always find that uh, Account well, uh, webinars are quite concentrated forms of learning, so we will um, we do need to just sort of uh, decompress for a few minutes and then come back to it. Um, so that is the plan. So you don't have to worry. I will um, give you a bit of a, a heads up. And um, for those of you that are new to me and haven't come to a session of mine before, uh, that is me. Um, that is a, a very small print bio, and I've got to actually thin that bio out. Um, but it's it's kind of where I come from and what I do. And, uh, you know, I am a regular on the SAAA platform. I really do enjoy the SAAA audience. You always um, chat and have got a sense of humor and uh, keep me on my toes. And that is the best way to have it. I, I like to have an engaged, interactive conversation with the audience. Um, that's the point of having a live session. Otherwise, we may as well have a pre-recorded session. So what... Um, the broad scope of this is, I've just seen my footer and my slides needed to be updated. Um, the broad scope of, of the session is looking at the Companies Act, really, the approach that I've taken is looking at the Companies Act through the eyes of a company secretary, okay? Um, what I need to get straight right up front, that a company secretary, and I've extended that to directors as well, a company secretary directors, because not all companies have a formal appointment of a company secretary, not all companies require a formal appointment of a company secretary, but the work still needs to be done. Okay, so this could also extend to the board of directors and quite often um, that relationship between the company secretary and board of directors is very, very close. And um, the work and the, the issues still need to be addressed. And um, so I, I have broadened it a little bit. But a company secretary's task is not the same as doing secretarial work for a company. So those of you in practice that are filing change of director's notices, filing MRIs, doing share changes, um, doing the admin and the paperwork with SIPSI, uh, that is different or not necessarily the same, although a company secretary can be responsible for that work as well, um, to being a formal company secretary. Okay. Um, 
so you could outsource and have somebody at the accountant's office or if you are the accountant, you could be doing that for your client. Um, and it doesn't necessarily also impede your independence because it's like submitting a tax return on behalf of your client. The client is the one that calculated the tax. You simply are a, um, a vehicle and a, a platform to get the information to the right person. You're not the decision maker if you're doing it for your client because the information and the decisions are made by the directors or the shareholders. So we will talk a little bit about some of those as well. So what are the compliance obligations? What do directors and company secretaries need to do? And um, we need to broaden that a little bit as well as to who can be directors, who can be company secretaries, how do you appoint, how do you remove? And um, just so that we make sure we've got good governance happening in that space. What happens if you don't get it right? What are the non-compliance issues if you don't get it right? Um, what are you required absolutely to do um, in court in terms of the act? And then the Companies Act Amendment Bill is coming through. That is going to be interesting as well. So I've got the Companies Act Amendment Bill sort of encapsulated at the end of the session, but I am more than likely knowing myself going to, as we hit the current section in the acts um, that, you know, the annual return or whatever it might be, I will pretty much at that point tell you what the amendments are saying. Um, and then in your notes, you will simply have it later um, as, as where it is in your notes, exactly what I've told you. Okay. Um, so just a, a way of sort of showing how I've structured the notes that the notes may look extensive and a bit intimidating for a two hour session, but we are going to cover everything, but not necessarily slide by slide by slide. Um, hopefully a bit more of a, um, a winding journey as it were, uh, a more of a practical conversation. And then just to, to just touch base for those of you that are operating with closed corporations, um, closed corporations are not dead. Closed corporations have not gone away. Um, there is no sunset clause on the act. Okay. Um, instead, what we have is to remind people about accounting officers, remind people that there is still a requirement to have an accounting officer, um, and that closed corporations are still functioning within the corporate space. We are one of the only countries in the world that has a dual corporate citizenship. Okay. Um, we have got a, you know, in South Africa, if you think about our history in with the 73 Act, it was incredibly onerous incredibly um you know uh, administrative for people to run companies so in the early 80s people wanted an alternative form that wasn't so onerous so essentially a closed corporation was an incorporated partnership and um, owner managed partnership that uh, got public uh, i mean limited liability and and was able to be a separate legal personality and they try to make it easier to do work with, okay? Um, but what they also were, uh, so, so that's why we landed up with the two types of corporate personalities in South Africa. And then of course, with the 2008 Companies Act, Act if you had to come to me today and say, should I continue operating in a closed corporation or should I convert to a company? I will tell you every single time to convert to a company because the New Companies Act is actually better. Okay. Um, the new companies act is, is definitely more flexible, more fluid. The members of a CC actually have more, oh, it's more onerous for them. Um, and there's more challenges and issues and lack of flexibility. So, you know, being able to structure shares and being able to, to do all sorts of interesting, fun stuff, um, is not available to close corporations like it is to companies. Um, so, you know, the time, the, the CCs, if you're running a CC, uh, pretty much you are dating yourself and showing people how long you've been in business. Um, but if you really want to take advantage of everything the Companies Act has to offer, and we're only going to look at a slice, I'm not even going to give you the full package of Companies Act work. Um, just, you know, we're just really looking at a, a, a slice of it um, today. Um, but a, a, a company definitely makes more sense nowadays um, in, in terms of corporate law. So there are various role players um, that we need to unpack and look at. So the directors are obviously your 
beginning and end of corporate governance um, in a business, they are the buck stops with them. They can never delegate their responsibility. Thank you. I hope that you enjoyed that video. For more of our webinar videos, go to www.accountingacademy.co.za. Thank you and have a lovely day.